Science is the process of thinking God's thoughts after him. Where there is matter, there is geometry. Why are things as they are and not otherwise? Nature loves simplicity and unity. Without proper experiments I conclude nothing. Geometry is the archetype of the beauty of the world. Do we ask what profit the little bird hopes for in singing? Einstein should learn from reason. I much prefer the sharpest criticism of a single intelligent man to the thoughtless approval of the masses. The chief aim of all investigations of the external world should be to discover the rational order and harmony which has been imposed on it by God and which he revealed to us in the language of mathematics. The wisdom of the Lord is infinite as are also his glory and his power. Ye heavens, sing his praises, sun, moon, and planets, glorify him in your ineffable language. Praise him, celestial harmonies, and all ye who can comprehend them. And thou, my soul, praise thy creator. It is by him and in him that all exist. I had the intention of becoming a theologian, but now I see how God is, by my endeavors, also glorified in astronomy, for the heavens declare the glory of God. My greatest desire is that I may perceive the God whom I find everywhere in the external world, in like manner also within and inside myself. Since we astronomers are priests of the highest God in regard to the book of nature, it befits us to be thoughtful, not of the glory of our minds, but rather, above all else, of the glory of God. Once miracles are admitted, every scientific explanation is out of the question. God is the kind creator who brought forth nature out of nothing. O telescope, instrument of much knowledge, more precious than any scepter. When ships to sail the void between the stars have been built, there will step forth men to sail these ships. The diversity of the phenomena of nature is so great, and the treasures hidden in the heavens so rich, precisely in order that the human mind shall never be lacking in fresh nourishment. Great is God our Lord, great is his power and there is no end to his wisdom. Praise him you heavens, glorify him, sun and moon and you planets. For out of him and through him, and in him are all things. We know, oh, so little. To him be the praise, the honor, and the glory from eternity to eternity. Just as the eye was made to see colors, and the ear to hear sounds, so the human mind was made to understand, not whatever you please, but quantity. The roads by which men arrive at their insights into celestial matters seem to me almost as worthy of wonder as those matters in themselves. I believe only and alone in the service of Jesus Christ. In him is all refuge and solace. Nature uses as little as possible of anything. We do not ask for what useful purpose the birds do sing, for song is their pleasure since they were created for singing. Similarly, we ought not to ask why the human mind troubles to fathom the secrets of the heavens. The heavenly motions are nothing but a continuous song for several voices, perceived not by the ear but by the intellect, a figured music which sets landmarks in the immeasurable flow of time. 
the Creator, the Fountain of all Wisdom, the Approver of Perpetual Order, the Eternal and Super Essential Spring of Geometry and Harmonics. I am a Lutheran Astrologer, I throw away the nonsense and keep the hard kernel. Astronomy would not provide me with bread if men did not entertain hopes of reading the future in the heavens. Those laws are within the grasp of the human mind. God wanted us to recognize them by creating us after his own image so that we could share in his own thoughts. And if piety allow us to say so, our understanding is in this respect of the same kind as the divine, at least as far as we are able to grasp something of it in our mortal life. The earth is round, and is inhabited on all sides, is insignificantly small, and is born through the stars. If God himself has waited 6000 years for someone to contemplate his works, my book can wait for a hundred. If my false figures came near to the facts, this happened merely by chance. These comments are not worth printing. Yet it gives me pleasure to remember how many detours I had to make, along how many walls I had to grope in the darkness of my ignorance until I found the door which lets in the light of the truth. In such manner did I dream of the truth. As soon as somebody demonstrates the art of flying, settlers from our species of man will not be lacking on the moon and Jupiter. Given ships or sails adapted to the breezes of heaven, there will be those who will not shrink from even that vast expanse. Ships and sails proper for the heavenly air should be fashioned. Then there will also be people, who do not shrink from the dreary vastness of space. We find, therefore, under this orderly arrangement, a wonderful symmetry in the universe, and a definite relation of harmony in the motion and magnitude of the orbs, of a kind that is not possible to obtain in any other way. In theology we must consider the predominance of authority, in philosophy the predominance of reason. Thus God himself was too kind to remain idle and began to play the game of signatures signing his likeness unto the world, therefore I chance to think that all nature and the graceful sky are symbolized in the art of geometry. If the earth should cease to attract its waters to itself all the waters of the sea would be raised and would flow to the body of the moon. My aim is to say that the machinery of the heavens is not like a divine animal but like a clock, and anyone who believes a clock has a soul gives the work the honor due to its maker, and that in it almost all the variety of motions is from one very simple magnetic force acting on bodies, as in the clock all motions are from a very simple weight.